Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Noir Histoire. I'm Natasha, and in this episode, I'll be discussing In Our Mother's Garden. In Our Mother's Garden is a 2021 film directed by Chantrell P. Lewis about the relationships between black grandmothers, mothers, and daughters. The film runs the gamut of emotions as various black women share moments and memories from their lives and the lives of their female ancestors. It's an incredibly moving and deeply personal documentary in which most will find something to which they can relate. How to describe In Our Mother's Garden? It's... With other movies and documentaries, you can easily summarize them, the main gist of them. It's a little bit difficult with this documentary, but to be clear, that's not to say that it's a bad documentary. It's actually an incredibly amazing documentary. I came across In Our Mother's Garden while doing a Google search for films related to motherhood that would fit with my um, theme for May of Mother's Day, but like through a black lens. I hadn't heard about this documentary when it came out, but when I was reading the summary, it was described as being a film about black women and their mothers, the relationship between black women and their mothers. So I checked out the film expecting it to be primarily about that, and it certainly is, but the film's also about much more. In watching the film, certainly what you have here is, much as with many other documentaries, you have like various interview subjects speaking on a given topic. And the way that it's set up here is that you have multiple women speaking about their relationships with their mothers, speaking about their relationships with their grandmothers, and pretty much their matrilineal line here. In addition to their mothers, grandmothers to some degree, they also speak about other female relatives. But really, it's them as daughters, as it's like the, the younger generation here that's the um, interview subjects. And they're speaking about their relationships with their mothers and their grandmothers. And as part of that, while they briefly tell their own stories as far as like a, be a brief biography of where they're from, they also reach back to explain where their ancestors are from, where their people are from. So like where their mothers and grandmothers hailed from. And in sort of bits and pieces, jumping from interview subject to interview subject, you get to know a little bit about each one of these women. A lot of attention is paid to them. A lot of attention is paid to them telling stories of their ancestors, of their mothers, of their grandmothers, and how those women's experiences influence them as people and also influence how they raise their children and on from there, how their children then raise their grandchildren. So sort of this thing of how experiences, how one person's experiences then influence their descendants over generations. It's actually a really interesting approach because what you find is that certainly some of the women, well, individuals, right? Um, some of them are like well-known, or at least they're people that I've seen in other things and other documentaries, you know, given commentary elsewhere. But at the same time, many of them are less well-known, or at least I was unfamiliar with them. Quite often with these types of stories, with these kinds of documentaries, you find that the subjects are celebrities, meaning often like actors, actresses, entertainers, or individuals who are leaders in some field or another. And so you had that to some degree here as well, but I also really appreciated that there are people, not to say that they might not be famous, that they're somehow of low value or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying at all. But rather that some of them just seem to be like everyday people telling their stories, the stories of their ancestors as well. And it actually makes for a really interesting documentary. What you have here is these various women from different parts of the country, actually from different parts of the world, sharing their experiences as black daughters, and then also sharing the stories of their mothers and grandmothers. So those women's experiences experiences, their journey from pretty much a brief overview of their journeys from childhood to adulthood, but not in the traditional sense that we might think of where they specifically go, you know, day by day or event by event, but rather looking back over their lives through the lens of their relationship with their female ancestors. At times, citing specific experiences or memories from their interactions with these female ancestors. And so it's actually a pretty interesting approach to a documentary of this type, because so often when you view documentaries or read books and whatever else, I mean, maybe more so with books, it's been my experience, not so much with movies and documentaries, in the telling of an individual story, it tends to focus on them. And maybe you might get like mention of a brief, and when I say brief, I do mean brief, overview of maybe the lives of their parents or something like that. But here, because the documentary is meant to explore the relationships between daughters and mothers and grandmothers, with 
which is the relationship between daughters and mothers just over generations, the ancestors become an integral part of the story as well. And so at the same time that you have this story with what would be like the present day, let's say daughter, a granddaughter telling a story, because of their experiences, because of their lives being so influenced by the lives of these female ancestors, the stories are told concurrently where they share their story, but to really give you an explanation as to why they were raised the way that they were raised, why they had the experiences or some of the experiences that they had at the same time that they tell their story, they kind of take a step back to tell the stories of their mothers and their grandmothers. So unfortunately with some of the women, you know, they there, there aren't like perfect stories. They're human stories. And so with that, some of the mothers have flaws. Some of the grandmothers have flaws. They don't necessarily behave as we might expect them to. But with that, you have these instances where some of the subjects, when they share their stories, there's like, they dive into some not so pleasant experiences that they had. And through that, this is where I think um, the documentary becomes more than just this story of mothers and daughters and really becomes more about the black female experience. It's because in this conversation about trauma and negative experiences, learning to cope with those things, self-care, taking time to heal, therapy, things of that nature, it's like you have these traditional themes that are associated with you know, within the black community with black women. So there's conversation about, you know, some of the ancestors and even some of the current women being involved with the church, the active role that they play in their families as mothers, aunts, sisters, wives. But the documentary branches out beyond that and really tries to explore the full spectrum of the black female experience. We're sure there's church, there's work, there's academic achievement, family, things like that, but then also seeking a deeper understanding of black women as individuals. And as part of that, discussing, certainly in the telling of black people's story, this discussion of trauma. But I like the approach here where it's not just rehashing or solely focusing on the negative experiences of black women, but using that as a symbol of the women like the women do here to really explore going through those negative experiences the myriad ways in which they've, the methods in which they've learned to cope with those experiences, or even for those that haven't fully learned how to exist, how to cope, like find coping mechanisms that work and found peace, they just have the desire to do so. And so you have this conversation about how to deal with, how to cope with, and hopefully not forget, but enable oneself to move past these negative experiences. And it ends up being like pretty deep and human than a lot of other projects that I might have viewed about black women, about black people. There's so often this conversation about black women and the strength of black women, perseverance, these are the things, black women being the backbone of the black community, which is certainly true, but something that I'm learning and something that's discussed here is this thing of just surviving, of moving through these never moving through these negative experiences, these hardships without really taking the time to assess the emotional damage of them or to acknowledge the emotional damage that they cause really dehumanizes black women, black people as a whole, actually. So it's like, sure, we might have conversations about, you know, black people and what they might have endured in slavery, what they might have endured during segregation and other forms of discrimination and oppression. But when we just focus on the facts of these things, but we don't also dive into the emotional toll, the impact it really serves it dehumanizes black people. It's like when you look at the system of racism that was built in part on the dehuman it's like when you look at the system of racism that was built in part on the dehumanization of people from a physical perspective, right? Physically treating black people as chattel or as property, stripping them of their humanity. Because the physical sense, sure, where you put black people to work, where you're sexually assaulting and raping black people and other acts of physical oppression, quite often we don't dive deeply enough into the emotional toll that those things take, you know, when we do discuss these topics. It's really from the perspective of sort of this thing of taking pride and making a way out of no way, of coping with hardships, of not even coping with hardships, of just persevering and getting through hardships, but not really having a conversation about what that takes, what that does to a person. 
person and really the importance of not just moving through these experiences, but actually taking the time to acknowledge one's feelings, whether in the moment or afterwards, and then figuring out how to cope with those feelings and heal from those negative experiences. And so it's like, so often when we talk about these negative aspects of the black experience, so much of the focus is placed on if it's church, most emphasis is placed on, you know, um, which would be black people being heavily invested in the church, um, black people in entertainment, music, culture, artistic expression and whatnot. The words of how we deal with these problems, but not necessarily, you know, we deal with the what's of these problems, but not necessarily the whys and the hows, you know, the deeper exploration of why are we creating art? What is it that black people are trying to express this tension that we're seeking to relieve by being involved with the black church, by being innovators with regards to music, artistry, you know, this expression, why is it, how is it that we come to find solace in these different outlets? And then asking deeper questions of when we utilize these outlets, how are we going about, you don't want individual people, let's say everyday people, how are they going about coping with these hardships, with these difficulties as a black person moving through the world? So I thought that was like really interesting, you know, like what are black people doing if you're not in the church or if you're not creatively inclined, how are you coping? And so I just thought that was really interesting. The documentary's approach to dealing with this was pretty incredible. There's like, you know, there's bright moments where people look back on their lives, the subjects look back on their lives and they discuss happy memories. They discuss positive experiences in their childhoods. But then there's also discussion of negative experiences because we have both good and bad in life. I feel like it helps to make things feel especially human because so often when you look at entertainment, entertainment, let's say, either intended for black audiences or that feature black characters or black people, it quite often tends to be an either or kind. Kind of thing where it's overly simplified and it's all sunshine and rainbows or it's just terror and dysfunction unhappiness but it's like in life it tends to be a mixture of the two where you can have one person and even within themselves they can have both positive and negative experiences they can have both happy and unhappy memories so there's this oversimplification there's this oversimplification with black people where it's like a very black and white perspective on the experience where quite often it's either presented as good or bad or all good. The reality is that it's typically a mixture of both. And here I really appreciated that even in exploring these relationships between mother and daughter and on and on through the ancestors, that those nuances, the layers to these relationships, the good and the bad of these relationships are explored. So it's like, sure, you have some of the subjects who've had amazingly positive experiences with their mothers, right? Who didn't have any problems in childhood, didn't really experience any difficulties in childhood. But more often than not, you had a little bit of both. So it's like, it's balanced, right? It's, uh, it varies by subject. And so it's like by having these different views and opinions, perspectives represented, I felt like it gave you a more, you had a better sampling size. It wasn't like hundreds of millions of black people, but I felt that by using this array of black women from across America and even across the diaspora, you got a good sampling size or at least a good indication, a better indication of the experience of black women. There's more nuance in this representation. And And, you know, you know, this is something that unfortunately still needs to be discussed, that not all black people are the same. Not all black people's experiences are the same. So it's like you have black people here represented from different socioeconomic groups, from different parts of the country, reasonably different generations as well. And so I think it makes for an interesting documentary. It makes for a more honest portrayal, a more honest or realistic representation of the black female experience. And I just really enjoyed this documentary. Not that I was expecting to dislike it, but I was very impressed by it. The creativity, the humanity of the documentary, incredible.
And when I was looking for potential documentaries to review, potential movies to review, I saw the reviews for this and not really having expectations, not having really previously heard anything about it. You know, I saw the ratings and I was like, okay, you know what, this is kind of interesting. But I didn't really take the time to read through the reviews. I wanted to form opinions for myself, but I did know that it was pretty highly rated across the board. And so I, when I watched the documentary, I completely understood why. It's a complex complex documentary because the subject is complex. The topics that it touches on are complex. It discusses the human experience, which in and of itself is going to be a complex subject because there's so much variation, there's so much nuance. But it's still very digestible. It's not difficult to understand. It's not like highfalutin or anything like that. Another thing that I enjoyed is that when you watch documentaries, it's obvious that the filmmaker has an agenda. But I don't really think there's an any I don't really think there's any agenda here. The filmmaker was really just looking to explore and explain the experience of black women and does an incredible job with that. It's a beautiful thing, you know, yet still it's a documentary that's hard to summarize just because it encompasses so much. But even though some of the topics that it touches on are complex, it's incredibly approachable. It's very easy to get into, to understand, and to watch. You don't really feel as though there's any specific agenda here, at least I didn't. And watching this by virtue of exploring the relationships between women and their mothers and grandmothers, obviously, you know, there's a thread there about our ancestors, but the documentary even branches out there to discuss, you know, like the traditional practices of connecting with the ancestors and the various forms that takes, be that hoodoo, other forms of ancestor worship, connecting with those who have passed on in various forms. And I just like this documentary. I like that. I like that it's not just one thing. It's like, sure, there's this broad overarching theme, but then it's like with each subject, they're given their space to tell their story. And it's like, there's certainly a framework here, so it's not like a free for all, but it's like the interviews feel natural and free flowing that there's this structure to ensure that like, they're on topic, but it doesn't feel overly restrictive. You don't feel as though you're being guided towards one opinion or perspective or anything along those lines. It's just that these women are sharing their stories and experiences, the stories and experiences of their ancestors, and they're not really being asked to form an opinion or to make a decision based on the content. It's just, you know, to listen and appreciate the experiences of this specific group of black women and then utilizing that to know to then carry some of these conversation points, I think, into your own life, into your own relationships. And so with that, I highly recommend this documentary. Thanks for tuning in. Show notes are available on the Noir Histoire website by the link in the episode description. If you enjoyed this episode and want more, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and check out my movie review playlist.